Hello and welcome to T3 Day 4 of Honors Precalculus. We're going to continue talking about parabolas. So let's say I gave you this parabola right here, y equals 1 fourth x squared. That's this parabola right here, 1 fourth x squared. Y equals that. So one thing we should recall is that P is the focal length, which is the distance from the focus to the vertex. That's this distance right here. That's the P value. So this whole thing is 2p. That's what that dotted line there means. Um, so what that means in this case is p is going to be equal to 1. And what you might remember is that this right here is 1 over 4p. So in this case we have 1 over 4 is equal to 1 over 4p. So another way to recognize that, the only way to make this true is p is equal to 1 right there. The focal width is this distance right here, the distance across through the vertex. So if this is 2p and this is 2p, we know the focal width is the absolute value of 4p. So if you knew this horizontal distance, in this case we do because it's going to be 4, this is equal to 4. Another way to find p if it weren't given to, be, to us would be p equals 1. But the reason to find p if you have the vertex is it allows you to find the focus, which is right there. There is your focus, which is this really key point for a parabola. So one key thing to notice here is that when we're dealing with parabola, something you've seen before, if, if 1 over 4p, which is the coefficient up front, is greater than 0, then the parabola opens upwards. And if 1 over 4p, again, the, uh, the coefficient of x squared open, is negative, it opens downwards. So that's key to remember. So what happens if we switch x and y? You notice that all that happened right here is we switched x and y. Well, if 1 over 4p is greater than 0, then it opens to the right. And if 1 over 4p is less than 0, it opens to the left. So you can kind of think of positive as going up or to the right, and negative as going down and to the left. That's kind of how I remember it. It's generally how it plays out. So sometimes we're going to have these parabolas open sideways. So for example, you could be given this right here. x plus 1 is equal to 4y minus y squared minus 1. And we need to state the vertex focus, directrix, and all intercepts. So what we're going to do here so we need to rearrange this into a form where we can recognize all of those things. So the first thing we're going to do is add 1. So we get x plus 2 is equal to 4y minus y squared. We added 1 to both sides to get to there. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to complete the square on the left. We're going to complete the square on the left. Excuse me, I meant the right, the right right there. So the way we're going to do that is first rearrange a little bit so we can have the squared term out front. So we have negative y squared plus 4y. And then just to make it a little easier, we can factor out the negative right here. And we're doing this on the right because that's the actual quadratic. So we have this right here. We're trying to figure out what to add right there to turn this into a square. So what we're going to add there is half of negative 4 squared. So we're adding 4 right here. Now the thing is we're not really adding 4 to both sides. We're going to add negative 4 because the negative is on the outside. So we have x plus 2 minus 4 equals negative y squared minus 4y plus 4. And the reason we do that is we end up with x minus 2 here. This is negative y minus 2 squared right there. So we now have this in the form that we had up above. And what this tells us is that the vertex, the vertex is going to be equal to 2 comma 2 because we have the minus 2 right there and the minus 2 right there. And now we need to find the intercepts. Now remember the intercepts, the intercepts, let's do the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. And similarly, we could do the intercepts for the x-intercepts, and that's when y is equal to 0. So all you do is you plug in x equals 0 and y equals 0 into our, you can do the final form right here, and solve for the other. So. So let's start with x equals 0. So if you start with x equals 0 on this, you get 0 minus 2 is equal to negative y minus 2 squared. Multiply both sides by a negative, and you end up with 2 is equal to y minus 2 squared. Square root both sides can be plus or minus this is equal to y minus 2. So if y is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 2. So the x-intercepts are going to be x, uh, excuse me, x is 0. So that means when x is 0, one of them is 2 plus root 2. And when x is 0, it's also 2 minus root 2. So those are your two x-intercepts. You have to estimate those right there. So we can start plotting points here. The vertex is going to be, so the vertex is going to be right here at 2, 2. And the square root 2 is like around 1 and a half. So it's going to go 2 plus root 2, which is right about a little less than that. So right there, and then a little bit right here. So those are your 2 right there. So that right there is 0, comma 2 plus root 2. 
and this one right here is two, zero, sorry, zero comma two minus root two, and then our vertex there is two comma two. We need to find other intercepts though. The, the other one is gonna be when y is equal to zero. So when y is equal to zero, you have x minus two is equal to negative zero minus two squared. So you have x minus two is equal to negative negative two squared, just like this. So you end up with x minus two is equal to negative four. This is be careful here, this is negative two times negative two and then the negative on the outside. So you end up with x is equal to negative two. So the only answer to this would be negative two, zero. So there's one, which is right here, negative two, zero. And you know it's a mirror image, so this point is also gonna be up here. So what you can do is you could actually graph this quite nicely, so you have a nice parabola that's nice and smooth like that. Try to make it nice and smooth. So it goes to the side and it goes to the left, we know, because our coefficient out front right here is negative. So negative was to the left. So the really cool block of text here that talks about the reflexive property of a parabola. So in a parabola, we know that there's this focus right here, focus in the center, and what's really cool is that any point on the parabola here is gonna be the same distance to the directrix right here, the straight line distance. This also means that the reflection going in and out focuses on the focus. That's why it's called the focus. So like light coming in parallel bounces into the focus, so it, it like kind of concentrates everything. It's also why the other way works too. If there's a light right here, and this right here is a parabola right here, it means that the light shines out in a nice parallel way. It doesn't span out, it goes straight out. It's how flashlights work. So what we can do here is we can figure out um, what, where that focus should be. Like where should that focus be? And keep in mind these are three dimensional so that you can kind of spin that parabola. So on the sidelines of each of its televised football games, FBTV Network uses a parabolic reflector with a microphone at the reflector's focus to capture the conversations among players on the field. If the parabolic reflector is three feet across and one foot deep, where should the microphone be placed? Just like with word problems and related rates and all sorts of other problems in just about any class, draw a picture of what's going on here. So what's going on here is if we place this parabola on an axis, it says that it's three feet across and one foot deep. So let's go out one and a half right there, 1.5, and down negative 1.5. And just to be consistent here, I'm gonna do this in decimals because I really like those decimals instead. And it goes one high. So let's make that one. So what that means is, this goes here, this is the parabola. So somewhere in here, somewhere in here is the focus. Somewhere in there is the focus. Where do we need to place that? Where do we need to place that? Well, what we know, if we set this up, that point right there is one, 1 1.5 comma one, and this one is negative 1.5 comma one. And we know that the equation is gonna be y equals one over four p x squared. We're putting it at the origin, so that's why you're not adding or subtracting anything to the x values, so it's at the origin. The reason it's one over four p is from our, um, from our formula for this. So, um, how do we figure out where to place the microphone? Well, one thing we can do is we know that this point has to be, this point right here has to be on this parabola. So one, that y value right here, has to happen when you have one over four p is equal to x squared, which is 1.5 squared. So that's this value right here, you plug that in. So when you do this out, you end up with one is equal to four p times 2.25, right like that, which is nine over four. And then if you simplify this, uh, you end up with one is equal to one over four p times nine over four, like this. So four over nine is equal to one over four p. So 16 p is equal to nine, so p is equal to nine over 16. So that means the distance from the vertex to the focus is nine over 16. So that means it's gonna be right here, which is less than one. So it's zero comma nine over 16. So this question asks, where should the microphone be placed? It should be placed nine over 16 feet above, nine over 16 feet above the vertex. And that would be the place where all of the sound coming in would be reflected into right there. So that focus is right there. So what we did there was we knew it was like this because we set it up with the vertex on the origin, which we totally can do to make the math easier. And then we plugged in one of the points, this one, to solve for the p-value. And then the p-value, the p-value right there is this distance right there from the vertex to the focus.